Lamentations chapter number 2, Judgment. How has the Lord, and this is, you know, it was, Nebuchadnezzar did it, but the credit goes to God. The authorship goes to the sinner. They've sinned. God warned them in the law by the prophets. God used Nebuchadnezzar to do. But ultimately, yeah, you know, it, we, why did God do it? Yes. But don't forget Satan, Job 1 and 2. But again, God allowed it, gave permission. And it comes down to the very fact of our sin. How has the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger? It's not a good cloud. And cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel. And she was a beautiful city. She ain't today. Remember not his footstool in the day of his anger. Now the footstool in the Bible is like is the earth. So when God speaks of the earth, he speaks about one specific, one specific place. Jerusalem, Judah, Israel. The Lord has swallowed up all the inhabitants of Jacob and has not pitied. He has thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has brought them down to the ground. He has polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. God is very absolutely serious when it comes to sin. He doesn't play with sin. Jesus tells us that God made hell for Satan and his angels, and because we want to follow him, and those that continue to follow him and not obey God, he will cast you into that place made for Satan, made for the devils, and he'll cast upon you judgments because of sin. And we read that in the story and account of Noah. One righteous, just man was found of all the earth. And we've seen that here in Jerusalem and Judah. He has cut off in his fierce anger all the horn, that strength, of Israel. He has drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. And he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire which devoured round about. And that's likened to the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ against the people and nations that are against him. Yet Jacob comes out. Jacob comes out pure. He comes out clean. There are no sins to be found out in, in Jacob when the Lord comes back. He has bent his bow like an enemy. Nebuchadnezzar's army did. Nebuchadnezzar and his army and the Chaldeans were a weapon of God. Why did this happen to me? It may be because of your sin and it may be because God has used that thing in your life to be a weapon. A correcting rod. To get you back. He stood with, with his right hand as an adversary. Now that right hand in the New Testament tells us where Jesus Christ sits. He slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the door of Zion. All the beautiful women. He poured out his fury like fire. Second Advent reference. But Second Advent again goes to all or against the Lord. The Lord was an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all her palaces. He has destroyed his strongholds, the, the towers, the walls, and has increased in the daughter of Judah mourning and lamentation. There is more mourning and lamentations than there are rejoicing. There are more funerals going on than weddings. He has violently taken away his tabernacle and destroyed, burned, taken away as if it were of a garden. He has destroyed his places of the assembly. The Lord has caused the solemn feast and the Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion. 
and has despised in the indignation of his anger the king and the priest. Sabbaths are gone. The feasts are gone. The Lord has cast off his altar. That's the brazen altar. He has abhorred his sanctuary, the temple. He has given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of the Lord. Again, shows you. They were in the temple, the Gentiles, as in the day of Solomon's feast. Instead of Jews being there, the Gentiles were there. Instead of worshiping God, it was for destruction. The Lord has purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. The walls are gone. And we see that in Nehemiah. He has stretched out a line. He has not withdrawn his hand from destroying in David's time, when David purchases Jerusalem, the mount where the temple is to be, the angel of the Lord is going out killing, and the Lord says, stop. It's enough. David, go get an offering, an offering for me. And the Lord was appeased. He's not getting appeased here until everything is destroyed. You know what sin will bring you? It will bring you utter destruction. The gates are sunk into the ground. He has destroyed and broken her bars. That's the gates. Her king and her princes are among the Gentiles. They're gone. They're no longer in the land. The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. Jeremiah is, is, is it. His messages are gone outside of lamentations. All he's doing right now is writing what he sees. The Lord's not speaking to him. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit upon the ground and keep silence. They have cast up dust upon their heads in sorrow and misery and pain and suffering. They have girded themselves with sackcloth, getting down to the bare necessity, getting down to repentance, getting down to get rid of all the luxury, as Nineveh did at the preaching of Jonah. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. There's no hope for them. There's no men for them. No young women for them. There's no hope of marriage. There's no hope of family. There's no hope. My eyes do fail with tears. And this is why Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people. Because the children and the suckling swoo, which means faint, in the streets of the city. Wasn't death enough? Jeremiah's writing Lamentations and he sees a young child walk and he just faints in the street. No food, famine, no water, drought. They're dying and fainting in the streets after Babylon has come and destroyed. You know, Jeremiah realizes how much of a right prophet he was, but how much destruction was there? You wonder if Jeremiah really ever believed what he preached until he's in lamentation. Then it becomes real. He was preaching the prosperity. Everyone going to temples, everyone has their gods, everyone has their money, everyone's happy. We're baking cakes to the Queen of Heaven. Ha 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 ha, right, party time. And now he's sitting in utter destruction. You know, like Noah, in the eyes of God, only Jeremiah is the right one. You ever wonder what Noah and his family thought when that door opened and they stepped out in the ark and there was no one else there? Now, it wasn't like Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve had no one before them. But knowing that Noah stepped out of that ark and realized that he floated above death over a year. Now Jeremiah is sitting here, and you know what? Jeremiah sat above death in a prison house, like Noah sat in a prison house. Noah couldn't go anywhere. Jeremiah couldn't go anywhere. And outside the bars and outside the, the, the ark, death and destruction. And liver poured upon the earth, and that's not literal. 
It's figurative. They said to their mothers, Where is corn and wine? When they swooned as the wounded in the streets of the city, when their soul was poured out onto their mother's bosom. Mom, where's food? Mom, I'm hungry. Mom, I'm thirsty. I'll throw a temper tantrum. Go ahead. You ain't going to get nothing. It's like going to the grocery store hungry. And when you get to all the grocery stores you can visit in your town. And all the shelves are empty. Mom, I'm hungry. Yeah, can't do nothing about it. Go make your little cakes now, woman. Come on, you spoke up to Jeremiah before. Go make your cakes to the Queen of Heaven. Oh, there's no more food to make it. Okay. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? What thing shall I liken to thee, O daughter? Jeremiah said, what on earth can I show as an illustration to what's going on right now? These children, what can I show? What shall I equal to thee, that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? For thy breach is great like the sea. You ever see any videos where, where like a dam bursts? Or when you saw years back when that tsunami hit uh, uh, Japan? It just took everything away. Have you ever seen a raging sea? I've seen a raging river where it just took everything in its path and it sent it down river. Who can heal thee? God can, but he's in his anger right now. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. Those are all the false prophets. Those are all the ones that tangled with Jeremiah and smacked him and put him in prison and made the people believe in a false hope. That's the preachers today, 99% of them today in their churches. And they have not discovered thy iniquity. There's no sin in them. Prosperity, happiness, butterflies, tulips. Oh, God is a floppy kind of luffily, fluffy, booty kind of goody goody God. Yeah? What is he now? What is he when the rapture happens and all you are left behind? What is he? Come on, prophets. To turn away thy captivity, but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. They got rid. You know what they did to those those prophets that survived? They banished them. They got rid of them. You liar. You know what's going to happen after the rapture? All these false prophets in the pulpits, they're going to be found as liars. They're going to get rid of them. If they're smart. All that passed by clapped their hands at thee. Hey, all right. They hissed and wagged their heads at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty and the joy of the whole earth? Ha, 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 ha. Where is your God now? Huh? You know, that's pictures of a Christian who is backslidden, who goes to the world and is in trouble, is in problems, is in disease, is in affliction, is all kinds of misery. Well, oh, where's your God now? Where's your Bible, God? Where's your church, Mr. Worldly Christian? Ah. Leaves a poor testimony, doesn't it? Wonder what Demas left when he died. All thy enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They're supposed to be doing that in hell. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly this is the day that we looked for. We have found. We have seen it. They're taking the credit for what God did. And this is an ambition of the Middle East, the United Nations, and the Roman Catholic Church today. Their ambition is to swallow that land and kill every Jew and be happy about it and bring in the kingdom. Na, 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 na. My eyes have seen the coming of the glory of the Lord. Wipe the white man off the planet so we can take over. This 
Verse 16 would bring joy to the Middle East and probably drop your oil down to a penny a barrel. Better watch out how far you'll go for a barrel of oil. The Lord has done that. See that? Lord, what, what did they say? We have swallowed her up. And the Lord says, the Lord, Jeremiah says, the Lord has done that which he has divided. No, you didn't do nothing. God did it. You better stop taking the credit for God. And better stop blaming God for things he didn't do. He has fully fulfilled his word that he had commanded in the days of old. He has thrown down and has not pitied. He has caused thy enemy to rejoice over thee. He has set up the horn of thy adversary. Horn, strength. We already read in the previous article that uh, uh, scripture that the horn of Israel, the horn of Jacob has been lowered. Now the horn of the enemy. Horn is a, is a symbol of power and if animals that have horns, they will battle and fight with their horns. Their heart cried unto the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion. That's what they're doing today. It's a wailing wall. And except the Lord Jesus Christ, they're not listening. I mean, God is not listening to them. The only way God will hear them is by the blood and the repentance, by the forgiveness of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus died for their sin, was buried, and rose again from the grave. And other than that, I'm not listening, God said. I never knew you. Your prayers are vain. I've already told you what to do. I've already given you scripture what to do. I've already fulfilled 48 prophecies for you. Keep on crying at that wall. Keep on mourning at that wall. I'm not going to hear you. I want the Jews had a little wailing wall back then. A little portion of the wall that they cry under God. Over. And I'm not making fun of the Jews. Today, outside the testimony and the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, God ain't listening to them. And they are God's people. Think about a parent, a mother, or a father that won't listen to you because of your sins, because you've stretched out so far away that unless you come and really repent and get right with them, I'm not listening to you. Because all you want is want, 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 want. You don't want to get right. You just want more money. You just want more of this. You just want, want, want. Why don't you just get right? Get right before you want. Oh, wall, wall the door of Zion. Possibly a wailing wall then. Let tears run down like a river day and night. They're crying at it. So it seems by the Bible that maybe the wailing wall is not nothing new. Remember, Jeremiah is writing. He's walking around. He's sitting down. He's seeing and writing what he sees. There are a bunch of people at a wall in there crying day and night. Maybe they're sitting on a, on a boulder. Oh, this wickedness! I was going to get married in a couple of weeks. I was going to get. I was going to have a, this big party. I had my oxen fat, and I had you know, my, everything ready to kill. And I got the wine, and it's all gone. I was expecting my son home last week, and it's all gone. I don't know what's going on. Let not the apple of thy eye see. You better be careful how you use the apple of thy eye as expression. You know what that expression in the Bible is? Israel. God's people. You better be careful to the wife that you love. Sincerely. You're the apple of my eye. She's not Israel. You've stolen something from the... Listen, you talk about religions that steal something from the Jews... When you say you're the apple of my eye to your child, that sounds good. But you're stealing from the Jew. Do you think God really will honor something that you've taken from the Jew and placed upon yourself? You better know what you're saying and where the author comes from. Arise! That's it. That's it. They're down. Cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, and it's different times that the military would go out and watch. Before the face of the Lord, lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children. You know, Pentecostals didn't come up with that holy lifting up the hands. 
Jeremiah said, your children, are they in trouble? Lift up your hands in prayer. <coughs> that faint for hunger at the top of every street. Now, see, we already read that. Aren't they supposed to be playing with balls? Aren't they supposed to be going to learn about God? Aren't they supposed to be playful little things? Aren't they supposed to be going getting buckets of water for mom? They're walking and they're passing out. America hasn't got that far. I understand places in India. I understand places in Africa. I understand places in the Orient that there are children and people who are walking down the street and will kill over from thirst, will kill over from, from famine, will kill over because they have no food, and will kill over and die in the street. America hasn't reached that place. It's happening in Jerusalem. It is happening in Judah. It is happening to God's people. What do you think God's going to do to a nation like America? If God doesn't do anything to America, he will have to call all these Jews up and out of the grave and out of hell and out of uh, Abraham's bosom. He'll have to stand them up before all the world and say, I apologize to you for destroying your city. I apologize for you for destroying the, the temple. I apologize for destroying Judah because I let America sit strong. Because didn't we see in Jeremiah all the sins that Judah was doing, America's doing? So if those are the sins that America's, America's doing, what do you think God's going to do to her? Spare her? And defy his people? America is not God's people. And I'm talking just as much as the Chinese, as the Japanese, as the Russian, as the Spaniard, as the German, as the English, as the Mexican, as the South American, and anybody I forgot. If Judah didn't get away with it, you're not going to get away with it. We ought to be like Nineveh. Let's get everybody right. Let's make a law. Get on your sackcloth. Fasting. I forget how many days they fasted. Let's get right with God. Let's get rid of all the gods. And if you want to serve a God or you don't want to believe in God, you're banished. Behold, O Lord, consider to whom thou hast done this. Shall the woman eat their fruit and children of a span long about nine inches? How old is a child? About nine inches. Can you imagine giving birth to a child and as soon as you give birth to that child, you boil it and eat it? It's found in Kings. Oh, King, we took our my child and we boiled it. We ate it for dinner. We had a lovely dinner. That was it. And when it came to the next day, when it came to boil her child, she hid her child. Your child is only going to suffice for one day of food. That's what the Bible says. Congratulations, Mrs. Reuben. You've given birth to a baby girl. Good, boil her and we'll have her for dinner. Pass the ketchup and make sure it's kosher. By the way, thank you, Queen of Heaven. Thank you, Ashtoreth. Thank you, Baal. Serving you, I got God at mad at me, and I got to eat my own children. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword, death, army, militation. Jeremiah is seeing these dead bodies. They're all around him. As he's writing, thou hast slain them in the day of thy anger. Thou hast killed and not pitied, seen young and old. Let's see that guy over there. He was going to get a gold watch for doing 60 years at that, that vineyard. And there he is, dead. That boy just had his bar mitzvah. And he's dead. That woman over there, she just she just started learning how to bake and cook with her mom in the kitchen. She's dead. That guy was training for the military, and he's dead. 
That guy, his his wife just gave birth to a baby. He's dead. Thou hast called as a solemn day, solemn day, my terrors round about, so that in the day of the Lord's anger, none escape, nor remain, those that I have swallowed, swallowed, swandled, and I brought up as my enemy, consumed. Swallowed. You learn that. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. When he was born as a baby, she swallowed him. And brought up. That means a child that you've raised. From birth to adulthood. They're dead. They're gone. And those that are not dead are not gone. They are not in Babylon. They're walking the streets of Jerusalem falling flat of hunger. And dying. That's the wages of sin. That's the truth. In all reality, God did nothing. Man ate the fruit after God warned him not to. What am I going to do? I got pregnant and I'm not married. Hey. You're told about sexual relations and proper marriage. You're told how to do your money in the Bible. You're told how to respect your body. You're told how to respect your spouse's body. You're told the order that God has set for a family for it properly to work. And if you outside that step of the family that the ladder that God has set forth in the family then don't cry when your family's broken God didn't do nothing you did somebody did a human sin for humans are sinners the wages of sin is death for they all have sinned and come to short of glory of God there is none righteous no not one but if yet if we confess our sins he is able and just to forgive us our sin. And we learn from Jeremiah and we learn from Lamentations. The result of not repenting to God. I can do it my own way. Thank you very much. I can do it my religion. Thank you very much. I can do it any way but God's way. And I just say it ain't going to happen. God is a liar. And Picture what Jeremiah is seeing today as he's writing. And you know what? He's a proper prophet. He was sent by God, did everything God told him to do, and he's seen the results of his pro prophecies, and you think he's enjoying it? And yet, again, like Noah, he's the only right one. And you think you're going to get thousands? You think you're going to get millions to follow you as a Christian? You'll defy Noah and you'll defy Jeremiah. They didn't get very many. Jesus didn't have many followers. Paul started churches and the churches that he started gave him warfare and turned on him. One church he says, have I become your enemy? All they that live godly shall suffer persecution, and yet, and yet, for the wages of sin is death. You better know that. You better repent. You better get right with God. And you better be sure of one thing. When God says it, he's going to do it. You better know what he says. You better rightly divide. You better study the word. You better get right. 